Have you ever eaten something which tastes delicious and sweet but leaves you feeling sick afterwards? Well, the Bible can be like this at times. We read about the prophet Ezekiel and the apostle John eating the word, that's the word of God, and at first it's sweet to the lips, but then it leaves the stomach feeling bitter. Well, that principle is especially true of the passage that we're looking at this morning. We read about the return of Jesus. Mmm, that's really sweet. But then we read about the tumultuous series of events that lead up to his return. And oh, that, that's really bitter, isn't it? Jesus tells us about widespread deception and war and famine and earthquakes and pestilence. And these things aren't nice, are they? They can leave a sour taste in our mouth. And to make matters worse, these are only the prelude, the beginning of the end. Matthew, in his gospel, Jesus refers to these things as the beginning of birth pains. Now, that's an analogy that I can relate to because last October, my wife, Rebecca gave birth to our first son and I remember going into hospital on the Friday night and um, Rebecca started to get contractions so the nurse hooked her up to a machine which potted and mapped out her contractions and um, it showed on a piece of paper in a sort of graph like format that you could see as time went on, the contractions were getting stronger and more frequent. They were increasing in frequency and intensity. And the pain of each contraction was getting worse. The length of the contractions were getting longer and longer. And the amount of time between the contractions was getting shorter. Baby Asher was well and truly on the way. Well, Jesus uses this analogy of labour pains um, to tell us about his return. So natural disasters, wars, deception, disease, these things like the contractions are going to increase in frequency and in gravity. Now, as I speak this morning, we're in the middle of a global pandemic, aren't we? We could think of, of COVID-19 as like a really bad contraction. Now, I'm sure like many of you, I'm hoping and, and praying that life will return back to some sense of normality in the coming months as the restrictions be begin to ease. And I have every confidence that they will do. But the question that we need to ask ourselves is how long? How long is it going to be before the next major contraction? Weeks, months, years? Only God knows for sure. But one thing that we can be certain of is that these kinds of things that Jesus talks about are going to increase before his return. And on top of that, Jesus talks about persecution. Elsewhere in the Gospels, he says, you will be hated by all nations for, for my name's sake. And the Bible speaks in various places about a global persecution of God's people before Jesus comes. You know, just here in the UK, we can see it on the very near horizon. It's going to become very difficult um, to practice your faith um, in the coming months and in the coming years. Now, I don't say these things to scare you. I don't say these things to cause your anxiety and neither does Jesus. On the contrary, Jesus tells us these things in advance so that we're prepared. Because to be forewarned is to be forearmed. He tells us these things so that when they happen, we remember that Jesus is still in control. He is on the throne. He tells us these things so that we have a sense of urgency of, of reaching people and preaching the gospel. He tells us that these things are coming so that we put less trust in the temporal things of this life and more trust in the eternal things to come in, in his eternal kingdom. Store up treasure for yourself in heaven, Jesus says, doesn't he? Now, God has a greater purpose in allowing things like COVID and the dreadful things to come. He, he has a purpose in these things. <laughs> Just 
look at the last year with COVID-19, God has presented a, a unique opportunity for us to reach people. Because during this last year, non-believers, non-Christians have been more open and they've been more receptive to the gospel because the things which they normally put their trust in, their pension, their family holidays, their healthy bank account, profit them nothing. People have been shaken. People have been shaken. And when people hit rock bottom, there's only one way up. There's only one way to look and that's up towards the Lord. And you know, Jesus says that there's going to be fear and anxiety among the nations, none of them knowing the way out. But we as believers know the way out, Garstang, don't we? We know who to turn to when these things happen. We know who to put our trust in. And so I pray that God gives you an opportunity to reach people in the current crisis and all the crisis, sorry, crises to come. I pray that the people in your lives, that he softens their hearts so that you can reach them. Um, and I just want to finish with these encouraging words and, and uplifting words, really, of Jesus in verse 28. He says the following. He says, when you see these things begin to take place, stand up and lift up your head because your redemption draws near. Jesus is coming, everybody. Thank you and God bless. Mm -hmm.